Bingo, it's the one o'clock clock. Woo, science. Think Tech Tech Talks. Art Kimura, Green Kimura, um, they're into robotics. We're going to find out exactly how they got there. Because um, Art was teaching in McKinley in, in biology, and Green was teaching in the education program at Hampan Hawaji down the block. And uh, they, they've been married for 250 years. Exactly. Am I, I got that right? Okay. I, I, I don't do math very well, but it seems right. right. Okay, and they retired, and they, they came together in this fabulous retirement program called Vex Robotics in Vex Robotics in Hawaii. In Hawaii. Yes. So <laughs> that's what you're doing these days together. Yes. What a great what a great thing. And I was saying before the show, you guys definitely appear to be enjoying it. You are happy guys. Happy guys. We're very fortunate because we yeah. get to work with some amazing uh, partners in our yeah. schools, yeah. students and teachers. Yeah. So we're very grateful for the opportunity. So what is VEX? VEX Robotics is a world global program uh, consisting of three different levels as we'll share with you today, from primary grades all the way to the university. And it's one of the fastest growing programs in the world right now, with over 26,000 teams in 52 countries. Teams, 26,000 teams. teams in 52 countries. Must be everywhere, yeah. It is. So it's, uh, we like the global aspect of it, to have our kids not compete just locally, but nationally and internationally. Oh, okay, so it's competition, but it's also providing them with the equipment they, they can use to uh, refine their skills and uh, effectively compete. And so, the, you know, one side to be the computer skills, the programming, and the other side to be the actual robots that respond to the computer uh, instruction. Yeah? That's correct. It's pretty sophisticated stuff. And I would bet, I would bet, you can bet against me if you want, I would bet that robotics now is much more sophisticated than it was in the day it first became a, uh, you know, a national avocation. Dean Kramer, we talked about mm -hmm. him, and uh, Segway. You know, he, he segged from his own Segway into <laughs> robotics. Right. He was out here a few times. Yeah. And, and uh, Vex has a history with him. Um, and now both organizations, Cayman's organization and Vex, they're both in this field. So it appears to me, actually, uh, that art, has 20 slides. Am I right about that? <laughs> there were more. <laughs> there were more. Okay, good. Okay, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. So is it okay if Art starts going through those slides right now? He absolutely should because uh, <laughs> we've collected them and we should cover them briefly. We, we know who's in charge here. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. Art, let's, let's do the slides. Okay. Good. You got uh, 10 minutes. So we both work for the Hawaii Space Grant Consortium, University of Hawaii, and primarily our focus is on workforce development in the area of STEM in particular. We are NASA funded, and part of our, uh, I think, programs now has taken a large measure of our work now is scholastic robotics. Uh, we first got involved 21 years ago with robotics, and we're still continuing to support it today. You can show the next slide. <coughs> So our beginnings with robotics actually traces all the way back to the Space Shuttle Challenger and the explosion. When Challenger exploded with a teacher on board and with Ellison Onizuka well, on Zuka, board. Yeah, the Boy Scouts uh, have right. a festival. We're uh, involved with that. Yeah. Oh, and are you really? Month, sure, robotics month. at the, uh, what do you call it, that uh, particular? Well, the STEM, uh, STEM workshop Workshop at, at the Onizuka Boy Scout meeting. Uh -huh. Every it, year, yeah, exactly. in the spring, in April, I think. April 27th. Oh, yeah, coming up Saturday. soon. Yeah, we're going to be yes. there with a the camera. Yeah. Please, thank we're you. We're going to find you. We're going to find you. Workshop. We're gonna take yeah. shots of you. Yeah. So right. why Challenger? It's because it gave me a relationship with NASA. Following that, in, uh, if you can bring up the next slide, uh, the beginnings of first robotics and then VEX robotics in Hawaii, actually, can you go back one slide, <clears throat> was actually uh, related to I'm sorry. Go ahead. Next slide. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me talk a little bit about this. In October, I was involved in a PBS special, The Future of Work. And primarily, it looked at how machines, artificial intelligence, robotics is affecting the jobs and the workplace, and how it's replacing a number of jobs and transforming. Next slide. That was when they have the 40 people in the big that room. Is correct. That's right. And Leslie Wilcox runs around and that's everybody correct. gets a chance. Exactly. Right. Yeah, well, that's a good program. No, yes. And I remember that, the future that. of work. That's, that's exactly. not an easy question either. No, it was a difficult time because the hotel workers are on strike. And I oh, think yeah. hotel workers realize yeah. that a lot of their jobs could be replaced by machines. It all goes through diversification, the key word. Absolutely. And in the second part of our show, we're going to talk about 
All right. Some detail. Okay, keep going. Oh, next slide. <laughs> Sorry. This is when you're supposed to kick him and go, make him go to the next slide. He's not this one. <laughs> so, as educators, this is our question. How do we train students for jobs in a future that has not been created? It's really difficult for us as educators and parents to think about what jobs will be like 15, 20 years from now mm. when our children will be out of school. Next slide. You mean in Hawaii? In Hawaii. Our workforce That's right. in Hawaii, we're talking about right Specifically. here. Yeah. Specifically. Yeah. So, our beginnings is 1999. By a chance meeting in Hilo, uh, I met a NASA engineer, Mark Leal, who had been in Hilo to uh, represent NASA in the building of the future Emilo Astronomy Center. He offered us two scholarships in the first robotics program, which eventually went to McKinley High School and Wailo High School, two of the most famous programs in Hawaii and nationally. And for, that was our beginning. And along the way, we brought in VEX about 15 years ago as a training program for her fall program that children could learn in the fall, and then first would happen in the spring. Eventually, the two first and VEX had a divorce nationally, and because that of that, Cayman. <laughs> okay. well, they, they it's had a great a, story. Yeah, it's a great I idea. mean, they split, and so VEX became its own entity, and first continued on. So VEX in Hawaii has grown enormously. There's four different programs right now. One for elementary children called VEX IQ from grades four to eight. There's a program called VEX VRC, or some people call it EDR, from grades, it goes from grades um, 6 to 12. And there's a college level program. Well. The, so the programs are at different levels. I mean, you get Absolutely. more sophisticated, the equipment, yes. the programming, uh, the, the, the robots, challenge. I guess. Right. And, um, and the kids <laughs> stay, they stay in one program. You know, you want them to keep, keep the program, keep going, right? We would they, like. Yes, we would like them to maybe start with IQ, maybe as a great third grader after a couple of years of that, as they become a sixth grader, perhaps transfer to the next program and stay with that program. The beauty of, uh, I think, robotics, not only VEX, but the other programs, they all have game challenges that changes every year. So it's like a sports game, but every year there's new rules, there's a new game. So they have to re-engineer, redesign, recode their robots to play that particular game. You don't want them to get stale. <laughs> exactly. You want them to go and move ahead, <laughs> yes. and move to more sophisticated. And we have seen the games have become way more sophisticated as the children have become much more adept in building, designing, and coding. The robots have become so much more sophisticated than what we ever imagined. But what do the kids get out of it? I mean, when you when you talk to them and you try to incentivize them to actually get involved, what do you, what do you say and how do they respond? Well, the first thing I think for me in, in being passionate about this program is to have kids get accustomed to choosing opportunities that are offered to them because robotics is often very new for them and for coaches, but the skills are enormous. Um, the, the deep desire to learn, either um, designing, problem solving, working together, collaborating with others, Time management. It's a team play. All, all these competitions all are of, a team yes, play. Yes, they, they are. And the skills that they naturally develop um, as a team that wants to be successful uh, will, will propel them into their future college and career. So we believe deeply that it's more than robotic competition. Is this better than social media? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to go there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, I think the collaboration, the give and take, even amongst teams who are competing, is so rich with dialogue and problem solving and sharing that um, I think the students are way ahead of the game if they participate in these kinds of things. And it's better than gaming? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, have a, I have grandchildren. Uh, they can be taken by that sometimes. Uh, it's hard to set limits because even we as grandparents don't know yet the profound effect yet of isolating oneself to the computer. Um, I like the social aspect of uh, the robotic team. See how rich they are in sharing their expertise. Yeah. Okay. Most of the administrator feedback we get focus more on the soft skills than the hard skills. They talk about the teamwork, the problem solving, the communication. Um, time management is a big one. And also the whole idea of playing with integrity. You know, so we don't want to turn it into a 
what that way we have p37 whatever mm. so when i keep that integrity for the mm. moment you know what they say about real estate no <laughs> real estate is not about land it's about relationships uh -huh. you know yeah. what they say about technology same thing a no. absolutely <laughs> Re well really a, the yeah. relationship that students and coaches and the community share are um, really make an impact on a child's uh, self-perception, the opportunities they have offered to them for their future. Okay, yeah. you got to yeah. continue sure. your slides Let's now. Let's go. We <laughs> next only have slide. a few minutes left. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next. So these are just some examples. You can spin through the next one. Just some examples of what these things look like. They really like sports-like games in a sports-like uh, view, and I think that's why. Uh, robotics has grown so much in the last 20 years. They've taken the two things that society honors the most, which is would be sports and entertainment. And by combining that with scholastic robotics, it's really grown in interest. Next slide. So we talked about some of this already. Why robotics? It's about trying to incorporate uh, these skill sets so that students can find passion in their life and find something of interest. Interesting thing, the complaint I get from teachers all the time is the students don't want to go home, which is, <laughs> which is a great thing. That's I an think. okay complaint. Next slide, yes, please. Thank absolutely. you. <laughs> so robotics, in my mind, is a sport in which 100% of the participants can become pros. I mean, that's, that's what I think. The potential is there. Pros. 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 What, what is pros a, what is robotics, a pro? They could become an engineer. Coding. Engineers. Make money. Yes. Yeah. Develop real robots. And yeah. not only in the STEM area, by participating in robotics, they learn those soft skills that are applicable to no matter what they do in life. So, yeah. True. <laughs> next slide. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. So, interestingly enough, we have been invited to uh, put on a VEX robotics challenge at the ESPN Honolulu Sports Festival in June. And this is the first time we've ever been invited to do this at a, a real sporting event. So, we're looking forward to this opportunity. Already been contacted by a team in Russia, a team in Colorado that's interested in coming to this sports festival. Another great fun. Do I win something? Do I win money? <laughs> no, the interesting thing no, is no we're, money not offering, we're not offering any prizes or any qualifying slots to this. It's just come and play with us at this really oh, unique venue. Yeah, you, you know the Russians are going to take this up. They're <laughs> <laughs> trying. We won't let them. Next slide, please. <laughs> so, Recently, we went to Japan because part of what I'm personally interested in is building, using robotics as a bridge between us and other countries. Right now, we, we helped start a new program in Japan called the Japan Cup. We took four teams there. And the, the whole environment is more about creating relationships, friendships, collaboration, than competition. And I think the Japanese appreciate the fact that we took four of our pretty high-end robots for them to compete with. Next slide. So this example uh, of collaboration it at pretty this was to in me. Uh, Shibuya. <laughs> in Shibuya, in, Shibuya, in yes. a business in center. Yeah. So what a tremendous experience it for the kids. It was so yeah. wonderful. And our students spread so much aloha there, sharing their expertise, really. And for most of them, this was their first trip to yes. Japan, I guess. they too. and yes. their parents. Yeah. Yes. So they're already looking forward to next year. Next so we have two what they call signature events taking place in Hawaii this year. One called the Mark Leon Invitational at St. Louis School this July, and one called the Pan Pacific VEX Championship. We have to apply for this designation, and because of the approval, we have received world slots, world qualifying slots from this tournament for the 2020 World Championship, which is pretty significant for Hawaii. Where, where is the 2020 World Championship going to be? In Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. There will be uh, probably 15,000 people gathered there for the championship from 50 countries. That's Mitch McConnell. <laughs> oh. I, I, I'm sorry I mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been there for a few years. Oh, okay. Yes. Center of the country, so to say. Yeah. Center of the southeast. So, oh, is that, yes. are you finished with the slides? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, now I have, great. I, have great. I have to ask me a you know, yes. question. Yes. How much of what Art said do you agree with? <laughs> Well, we had a discussion this morning <laughs> about my preference for his not using the word sport <laughs> or competition. <laughs> but I, I do believe we've said oftentimes 
that that's what people know. That's that's what draws them in. Um, I like to think that it's an educational endeavor. But with, with the motivation to be ready to compete, uh, you need that. Competition for education. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So yeah. our measure of success is not that you qualify for state or world championships. It's really the measure is from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. What did the students do? And that's really what we're, we're hearing. About. Absolutely. And when we come back from this break, Art and Reen, we're going to talk about why the community should care about this. That's Art and Reen Kimura with Vex, uh, Vex Robotics Hawaii. We'll be right back after this break. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, aloha. Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. So we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii. Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show. And it's streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. Okay, uh, courtesy Leslie Kamiyama, who's back there in the, in the gallery, <laughs> the fan. Um, and uh, we have Art, uh, so he set this up, Art Kimura, Reen Kimura of Vex Robotics um, of Hawaii, very important program. And a lot of kids are involved. And you guys are going like great guns. You know, we have so much going on, such you know, excitement, such passion, such attention to these kids. It's really wonderful to see what you do. And, and it's, I think it's because you want to excite them. You like the idea of exciting kids about something, right? And that what it is, is seeing them learn and seeing them realize their potential and becoming confident, you know? It, because, it, you know, if, if kids are confident, they can do anything. And they learn better when they're confident. It's really about exposing them to the opportunities. Not yeah. all children will gravitate toward robotics or even computer programming, but we need to expose them. All yeah. so that they can make the decision. Okay, so here's the thing. <clears throat> Hawaii, uh, even under John Burns, wanted to diversify its economy. And every governor since then has made noises about how we're going to diversify the economy. And when people came off the plantations, you know, and especially the Big Island, you know, they folded up the, all those Hamakua plantations up there and everything. Um, they needed jobs. And they, the government made little wee sounds about you know, developing companies, tech companies that would say that it really hasn't been that good work. And you know, we had a ten-year period in the in the odd years I call them of the, of the 21st century, where we were going to do entrepreneurship and investment in technology companies. It really didn't work politically. It didn't happen. <clears throat> and so here we are uh, with robotics, and as you guys have said. Robotics can teach a kid how to be a real operator in technology, how to get a job in technology, how to make high-tech things. We can't even imagine all the things that robotics teach kids you know, to do in their later years as they expand their own you know, appreciation and, 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 and acumen in science. So my question is, um, how do we keep them here? How do we make those, this is not an easy question. We reserve 10 minutes for it, but <laughs> it, it requires 10 hours. How do we keep them here? How do we make sure that you know, they, they realize their potential? How do we make sure there are companies and entrepreneurs and investors who will actually give them those jobs, to give them the platform they need, and the equipment, and the additional training, whatever it is, 
actually make us a diversified economy with technology at the core of it? I don't think there are any simple answers, as you said. No, no, no. <laughs> and I think part of what, in robotics, what, what I appreciate and enjoy about it, the fact that in VEX robotics, you, you are constrained to using only the parts that they provide to you. And yet, you can come up with some amazing innovations just using the parts. So at the event, you'll see uh, 30 different designs made from the same set of parts. You know, it's creating this idea of innovation is important in children, that there's no one set way you can solve the problem, that there are multiple pathways. Also, we need to look at robotics a much more uh, wide view rather than just for the educational part of it. It impacts on tourism in a way. We bring in teams from overseas. We have oh, yeah. probably 20 teams coming yeah, from China yeah. this year alone to our yeah, events. Yeah. We have teams traveling in our island. Yeah. We have teams traveling to the mainland, to the Far East. So there's a large uh, travel part of this program. And of course, I think we need to invest more long term than just overnight profit. We need to invest 10 years, 15 years down the road so that we can nurture this kind of innovation into real products that can sustain our economy. Okay, forgive me because you guys are in one end of it. I'm asking about the other end of it. But you say invest. What do you mean invest? How much money and where do I invest the money and who invests the money and how does that help? Well, I think we've had some, I think all of us have had experiences with uh, different companies and so forth. When we went to Japan, we had the opportunity of visiting a very high-tech company. They had 300 engineers there all dreaming about projects that the company would do 15 years from now. Professional engineers yes. Yes. who are yes. employed yes. as engineers. Yes. yes, in a think tank, in, in a one think company. Tank. In one and yet, company. they're putting yep. money not for immediate overnight profit, but they're putting money for five years, 10 years down the road. You know, and not all products will work, but if they can hit a home run with a few of them, obviously it's going to make big money. It's like all uh, startups, you know, you have to <laughs> fail a few times first. Yeah, <laughs> so I think, uh, I think our mentality has to change a little bit. That we cannot just immediately find the answer overnight. But investing in these children today perhaps can lead to finding that gem among these children. Don't you agree that the two are run parallel tracks? In other words, while I'm training these kids, educating these kids, and stimulating them to be creative and, and keep up with you know, modern technology, be world class in terms of their appreciation of what technology is doing and can do. You know, this is not easy, but this, this is the key. Okay, that's one track. The other track is making this community fully aware of the potential, making this community fully supportive of these kids so they don't run away from them, so they stay here, they make a living, we have a, a tech industry. I think that's what ultimately, you know, otherwise, whoop, off to the mainland, sure. right? Or they forget about what you taught them. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Um, so how do we do that? Well, I think, first of all, parents have to believe in the potential of their child's future and um, go beyond what they know, go into the unknown. Imagine with your child. Um, so it's not a matter of saying to Tom, Tommy, go into your room or go to the competition. It's a matter of understanding exactly what Tommy is doing, right? Exactly. And, and, and being right there with him. Knowing, knowing that. how he's spending his time, what he's doing, how he's programming, exactly. even helping him. It's like the parent who stands over the kid who's trying to learn math, and he shows him, or biology, as the case may be, <laughs> and he shows him how it works. And the opposite also works because children are so adept at learning new things. If parents are willing to be taught by their children, if yeah. parents listen to their child with the new innovation that they encountered or an idea they have to adapt that to something else. I think this is a new way of parenting. Absolutely, absolutely. Mid-Pack uh, mid High School, um, I guess it was the we Weinberg uh, Trust gave them all, gave enough money to buy, this a few years ago, mm -hmm. to buy uh, iPads. And so they went out and bought iPads. And now the kids had to learn uh, iPads. And the teachers didn't know anything about iPads. Mm -hmm. So you found that the kids knew a lot intuitively, and they yes. were teaching the teachers, yes. and then the teachers would teach the kids. So sure. it's an interactive it's, experience. It's interactive. It's a partnership. Yes, sure. and I think it's acknowledging the genius in every child. So I wish for every child to be able to tinker from preschool all through, say, a doctorate degree. 
and and we have to promote that as mm -hmm. adults, as parents, as mm -hmm. teachers. Now you're not part of the curriculum. You're you're after after school. You're you're well. Right? You're we, we are also promoting uh, robotics in the curriculum because STEM mandates, benchmarks, engineering benchmarks are now on the table, and teachers are having to figure out what does that mean in my teaching. What do I have to offer in my class? You help them with that. Well, whenever they ask us to, we have a ton of ideas how to how to do that. And I think it's very important that we all be totally open-minded and imagineers. Mm, sure. Um, and and you've got you've got to get into into the schools, you know, into the process in the schools. Some schools uh, already are are offering uh, robotics units in one particular grade level. That means every child in the grade level, when they go through that grade, gets an introduction. I think that's one way of servicing every. How about the equipment? The equipment that they use with VEX costs money. Yes. Who funds that? Is it parents? Are there organizations, nonprofits, government that actually been, help kids with that? We've been very, very fortunate. Initially, NASA gave us money. Annually, they would give us a grant. But more recently, we've had very generous donors from Hawaiian Electric Companies, for example, with a 30-meter telescope on the Big Island. Uh, most recently, the Department of Labor and Industrial Relations, to represent Mark Nakashima, provided us with workforce development money that provided us really, really a big input. And about 12 years ago, to, uh, at the time, Senator Ige and other senators were able to get an infusion of money to help start up those mm -hmm. I think that, the Is it fair to why? say that every kid in VEX who wants to be in VEX, who wants to have equipment, can get it? It's affordable. It's, it's affordable, affordable, very affordable, and it's like there's no barrier. He can always find a way to get that equipment. Yeah, our and biggest barrier, uh, frankly, has been trying to find a hero at the school that's willing to spend a lot of extra time after school, non-paid, on the weekends. <coughs> learning so, uh, this themselves. A teacher. Yes. Learning this themselves when they know nothing. You have to you have to get volunteers for that. Correct. But then you will train him. They do, yes. set, they do step forward. Yeah. And the robotics community is very supportive of one another. They will offer their help. Hey, here's what I learned. Here's how I got started. So it happens. The challenge is less than 5% of children in Hawaii have access to participation. And so. Because what's, what limits them? It, it's primarily the fact that a school can find a teacher willing to spend that extra time. And well, I don't the blame school them. paid that teacher. Well, we, we've even had people <laughs> in the square building gave some money, or DOE gave some money for that for that teacher to be a paid volunteer. We have had there that opportunities like that. There, um, are, there are some after school programs where the teachers do get paid, but in general, it's still finding that teacher who has, you know, willing to learn something new primarily. I don't blame them. It's, it's a it's risk. A, it's a big it's a, risk. For them. No, it's silly, fun. He? It's so fun. <laughs> oh yeah, I agree. Well, because I started computers when there uh, were only three of us in elementary schools offering computer education way back when. We started with Apple II's, and I had to learn I, I with the there. students. I, was there. I had to learn. So with you guys the are both techies, aren't you? No, no we're, not. we're not. We're absolutely not. <laughs> But it's like opening a, a, a toy box at Christmas. Now, in a perfect world, okay, I mean, I, I share with you the dream that Hawaii would have a tech industry. It would be around robotics, and robotics has got to be, um, if, not, if not, you know, the end product, at least a spawning field for creative thinking and it's tech, a tool. tech thinking, you know, <laughs> making science happen. Um, but what, what do we need to get there from the powers that be? If you were, if I made you governor, Art, okay, <laughs> you can be lieutenant he has governor. You to get I mean. my permission. <laughs> I, I understand. What, what would you do if, if I made you the legislature? You can be the Senate, you can be the House. Um, what would you do to, to create an environment, a platform where VEX uh, and robotics would take hold, would be the center of an industry that makes money, that makes jobs, that allows people to have a good life? I would replicate what Japan does. They have a, an agency called the Japan Science Technology Agency that sits parallel in the government to their Ministry of Education. This uh, Japan Science Technology Agency funds science museums. They fund research. They fund these special programs related to STEM. So it's 
keeping it out of the, the Department of Education mainstream and yet enriching what students are, have the opportunity to learn. We have, we have to have some kind of coordination uh, statewide. Right now, we're all volunteers. And the, the danger of this is eventually many of us will leave because of age or whatever. All the relationships will be taken with us. And that's, I think, the, the biggest fear I have. Is God, that make it sustainable, sustainable? Make it continue? Exactly. Yeah. That's beautiful. Robotics is about a $2 million industry right now in Hawaii, scholastic robotics, when you count up all the numbers of cost of equipment and so on. So somebody should start a company that <laughs> makes robotics big. Yeah. You know, something unique to Hawaii where we could demonstrate the, the, the skill that our kids We already get. have some former oh. robotics students who are now mentors and teachers and coaches who were that minded and they went to college. They're <laughs> brewing out there. Yeah. You guys going to do this forever? Of course. <laughs> Passion never dies. <laughs> it's great what you do. It's such uh, a community service. And in a larger uh, sense, you don't even know how much of a community service it is because <laughs> as it goes forward, you know, it extends further and wider and deeper. And you will see, I hope, we will all see the product of your efforts going forward. We, we have seen it already. We, we've yeah. already seen many, many students in robotics who have um, stellar lives. Oh, wow. And they're paying it forward. I want to be one of your students. <laughs> Art Kimura. <laughs> thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Thank you. Green Thanks Kimura, so much for thank having you us. Thank you so much. What yes. fun we have. What thank fun you. you guys we have. Do have we do have fun. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>